Hello and good afternoon everybody. We are starting our art lesson today. Sorry it's a little bit later than normal. It's been quite a busy day. Um, so today we're drawing a flower called a hibiscus. So if you want to pick a coloured pencil to do this in, I'd go for sort of a reddy pinky pencil. Um, see how you can get on with that. Um, so it's going to be more of the drawing. Just remember a few of the things we said from the last few weeks. Make sure that you, if you make a mistake, you can always rub it out. Don't worry about making mistakes. And if yours doesn't look perfect first time round, you can have another go. As long as you've got another piece of paper, you will be fine. And chances are you have the back of your piece of paper anyway. So, like most of the other ones, we start very gently drawing a guide circle. So we're not going to need this in the end, so you only need to do this very, very lightly. Draw a guide circle. Probably want to take up most of your page because we're not drawing much else of um, the flower, just the head of it really. Inside the guide circle, I want to do another circle in there, which probably shouldn't have been as hard as that. I think maybe make that a guide circle as well. So only do it very, very gently. In fact, I'll keep my rubbed out one, is it? Because it's good enough. And then coming out of the middle, you just want a line coming at this angle. About that far, but it's got to start on the far side of the circle. Now, what you need to do is, using your outer circle as a guide, you have to sketch in five large petals. So I'll do my first one, and remember, sketch it not really, really hard. So kind of curved round like that, and again, I'm using my guide circle as the outside. Doesn't have to be perfect though. Come like that, and I'm going to loop it kind of like there to the little circle there. For the next one, I'm going to start sort of midway up, joining out like that because the petals you sort of want to overlap. Can have a bit of a wobble in the line here because not all petals are perfect. And I'm going to stop that one there because next I'm going to come out from the middle and I'm going to pick it from a point where this is joining the circle or where this is joining the circle. I'm going to go out, make sure it goes out from the middle and curve it around like that. Try and keep it smooth until you get sort of the edge of the petal. And again, this one I'm going to stop about there. Because this I'm going to loop and curve out. Make it wide so it sort of looks a little bit like a kind of propeller blade type thing. So I'm going to make this petal start from here. It's going to be a nice smooth curve. And just do a little wobble there. We've got five large things. I think I might just put an extra little bit in here as well to join them up. These are still just using you're just using them as guides. So the next thing you want to do is you want to start adding detail to each of these petals. So imagine that each of these is the petal of the flower. I'm just going to draw this line in a bit, just shade it in a bit thicker, so I'm not confusing it with part of the flower. Um, so. You're going to want lines, again, remember with stems and things, they're coming out from the middle. And so I've twisted the paper just to make sure. So I'm going to have one that sort of just comes out from there. I'm going to have another one that goes up the middle. One that comes out from the middle there. And then we're going to have this one sort of like that. And it's all right with these if they're quite wobbly because you want them to sort of be you don't want them to be perfect straight lines because if you pick up a flower and look they're not perfect straight lines they do sort of wobble a bit in their journey so i'm going to do the same thing just with all of the other ones so it's up to you how you want to do it i think i'm just copying the main shape that I did from my last one um and you doesn't hugely matter probably want your veins going about as far the same distance out of the petals for every single one that you're doing. So I'm going to just do that a bit and have one going this way. So that's another leaf. And then I'm going to do coming out of here, just like this. Remember all the sort of veins are going to come out from the middle. Just imagine that this one has come from the middle but it's gone around the back of the other petal. So that's just sticking out from behind the other petal. So that's fine. Now with these ones, again, wanting to be spread out. So 
This one's got a bit of a curve to it because it's following the curve of the leaf. And I'm just going to jut out from there. Like that, that might be one side as well. So the moment I'm looking at this thinking it does look like a bit of a jumble. We'll see how we get on, see if I need to improve it in any ways. Okay, so got that. Next thing you want to do is probably, hmm, that one's quite right. So I'm just going to take out the inside of that barrier that was coming out. And this is going to be the centre of the flower where you get the sort of things on top. So I'm going to do it a bit broader in the middle. I'm using broader pencil strokes here. And that's going to come all the way to there and to there. Now in the middle, I would shade in the bits. Imagine that this is the big thing that comes out of the middle of the flower. Just shade around it like that. Maybe just wait and watch till I finish before doing this bit. Remember, if you're not sure, you can always pause and have a look or see what I do first. Now, the first thing we're going to do to the top of this is create it to be like a little star. I think this one's probably a bit too wide. So I'm just going to move it down to here. You want to put a strange kind of little star on this. So that's my little star and I'm going to add tiny little circles to the end of it. So this part of the flower is called the stamen. So it's where bees go to collect their pollen and lots of plants reproduce them, adding just sort of lots of little things that look kind of like little grapes, a bit like the ones we had for the thistle last week. Okay, at this stage, it's probably best to rub out your guiding circle. Now, it shouldn't be very thick, like my one, so I'm just going to rub out this. Yeah, just to keep it a bit simpler. And if I stood back and looked at that now, I'd say, yeah, it's looking all right. It looks a bit like a flower. Get rid of my guidelines first. It's going to make it a bit easier to see. There we go, that's not looking too bad. So the next thing you want to do to add this um, is add, like you did last week, and if you're following the patterns that we've been doing, you'll know that at this stage you're probably wanting to add some leaves on. So the first one I'm going to do is just at the top, it's going to be a tiny little sprig actually. Just going to start with the stem that's going to wind a bit like that. And we're going to have one leaf that comes out here. And they're quite nice, thin, elegant leaves. And again, like this one. And then we do one more. And finally, just with this one, I'm going to put a nice sort of curl at the top. A bit like this candle flame. So I don't think I'm going to have the little kink in the line there. Just keep it smooth coming down here like that. A bit like a candle flame, so I don't think those ones need to be much more detailed. Next, I want to be drawing the leaves around the plant, the flower themselves, and they're going to be slightly bigger leaves. Please make sure that these are going to be quite jaggedy edged leaves. So there's two ways of doing this, and I'll show you the two ways. So wait until I've shown you both ways before um, you do it. So there's two ways of doing it. The first way you can do it is just start drawing the leaf on right away. And I don't like that, so I'm going to try again. Should have done it lighter. If you're in P67, you know my step to success is always, first step to success with any sort of drawing is draw lightly at first to so make sure you're getting it right. So, that's a bit too light. So this leaf has come further out. I still don't really need to make that line a bit 
Okay. So I've done this very gently. Now what you could do, you could do it like that and then go over it again and make the outline a bit more jagged. Or you could just start straight up from the off trying to make the outline a bit more jagged. So that one, mm, I think you know with me that my first leaf is always going to be the worst and I'll get better as I go on. Um, so, yeah, I hope I do better. I might have to come back and do that one. So, I think I'm going to go for a very thin line just for this next one. Let's see if I can get the basic shape right first. Okay, I'm definitely happier with the shape of that one. Now, to make it look a little bit more like more realistic as leaf, I'm going to actually just rub that out. Now, I can see the remainder of that line. I can follow it. Still just a small trace of it on the piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that line like that. When I get to the sort of outer edge, I'm just going to throw in a little kind of, a few little kind of wobbly bits and, and chinks into the line from there because it gives the leaf sort of a slightly rougher shape because hibiscus leaves, they're a bit more jaggedy around the edge. It's not just a straight, straight line. And... There we go. I think that's the way I'm happy to do it. Now, if you're feeling very talented and confident, you can just try doing that shape first up. But I think for me, it's drawing it and then rubbing it out and having another go. So we, add obviously our, our veins to these leaves. So my veins are going to slightly follow the curve of the leaf. And then the bits that stick out a bit more probably going to get veins going up to them. There we go. Now the key thing with veins is you just need to remember that they're not always perfect. They're never going to quite be actually from here. They're never going to all match up beautifully. It's just the way leaves are. So again, I'm going to do just a very, very, very light leaf coming out of here. It's going to just swoop around here. And then it's going to go like that. I like that as a shape. Overall shape-wise, I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to rub it out. So I've just got the tiny, tiny line. I'm going to go over that and best. So I'm just going to, once I've gone around the corner, just add those few little jags and kinks into the line to make it seem that bit more realistic. And it's that extra level of detail. Um, that's going to be for a big leaf around this side. And again, this is smooth shape. And again, I'm going to have to make this leaf a little bit messier when I come to doing it. But for me, I'm happy with that shape. That is pretty good. So I'm just going to rub that out and follow the lines around like I've done other times before. So as I come out here, just funny little kind of bits where it goes out a bit broader, because I think that's a bit too far. So here, look, I'm just going a bit away from the line and cutting back into the line like that. I'm pretty happy with that leaf there. Um, I think. Now, to make the hint that this leaf is a bit further behind the flower, I'm going to just throw out an extra vein that's coming out of that angle. And then, as you can see, I've had a lot of practice with these veins now, as you will have if you've been following along with me. So, don't take a huge amount of time to do them. Just going to add two more leaves. We're going to have one that's coming out here. And this one, because it's a bit of a smaller leaf, has a better flick to it at the top. 
There we go. Same drill. So rub it out. And so I can use that to follow as I'm doing again the funny kind of oh sorry. Funny jagged leaf bits. There we go. And just find a little one in here. I'm going to just do a little drag in myself. I can do that now. There we go. So those are my leaf bits done. Now, this comes to the shading, and the shading is going to be it's quite make or break in this one because it gives you the shape of the petals. So the first thing I'm going to do, just to make it really, really clear that my petals are my petals, is I'm going to always do an extra just line of shading down where two petals meet. And try and keep the shading equal to thickness the whole way through. So you see there, that then makes it really clear I'm going to shade this bit too. That makes it really, really clear that that is the definition between two different petals rather than just extra veins. Because the other one is, it looks like it's a big mass of veins. And the flower looks a bit messier. And just take your time with this as well, make sure you're not colouring over a load of your veins. Um, and also, this will make, this is part of your shading, if you're imagining that it's where two bits of petal are overlapping, that's where you would be going to get more darkness anyway. You might think it looks a bit odd, so you will need to add a bit of shading around the tops of some of these. So I'm going to add some shading on these flowers here because the leaves are being overshadowed by the flower. So remember with the shading, you pretty much, you want to start as light as you can and then go a bit dark. So I'm going to go a bit thicker and darker here where the petals overlap. And then I'm going to go back to doing a bit lighter. I'm going to make this line here a bit clearer so it doesn't stand that as much. And um, this one, you just make this outside of this petal nice and clear. So you maybe just need to go over it one more time. Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to follow this one out. So here I've got the same thing. You're imagining this is a leaf that's overshadowing, being overshadowed. by the petals, so start quite thick and then just fade it out like so and I'm going to do exactly the same here. This is going to be sort of probably the darkest, hardest bit of shading and then as it goes on I'm just going to fade it out and fade it down here. And it's how you do the shading is what's going to get your picture from looking nice. Oh dear. Sorry, I hope that wasn't on for too long. I do have problems with my phone getting too hot and I don't really know how to make it better. So, just shading. From here, and then you want to shade the middle of the flower because you're making it 3D. So I'm going to shade just 
and then do it petal by petal. So we're going to do it quite dark, but then get lighter and lighter and lighter. I think the direction I did my shading wasn't very good there, so I think I'm going to do it this petal. I'm going to do it more as it's coming out of the flower. So my pencil strokes are going to be in the direction that the light is changing. I'm going to do a few streaks of shading up here. And you can do a bit on each side of the petal as well. Good, sorry, I'm just making sure my phone's not overheating again. So remember, really dark in the middle. I think probably I need to make this a bit darker. And then coming out. Making it lighter. It's funny how just kind of quite rough shapes can really impact the overall look. It's like if you look at a really good oil painting, like one of Monet's that we've been doing, you know, really closely, and actually the detail is just random sort of flecks of colour here and there. And the same with this, just a little bit of extra shading around certain areas. I'm just going to do a bit of shading around the edge here. You can just add that extra bit of shape or detail. And I'm sure there are some of you, well I know there are some of you in my class, but others who are watching who love their shading and can get a lot of really, really nice detail on theirs. So just the more of that see would be Good, you don't have to copy me straight away, you can have a look and just think, yeah, let's see if we've done that right. I can do it better, and I'm sure you probably can. And I'm just going to add a bit of shading on the leaves. So if you look at what I'm doing on the leaves, I'm just adding tiny, tiny, tiny bits of texture. And just make you think, oh, this is a bit more than just something somebody has drawn. Just in certain areas as well, it just gives it a bit more of a 3D feel. I'm just going around some of the edges, some of the grooves where they'd be. Yeah, right, so final one for here. Thicker and darker, and then going the lighter. I think this petal probably around the edge needs a bit of shading. And it just breaks up that outline as well, otherwise it looks a bit sort of cartoony. And the goal here is not drawing cartoons. Right, so I'm going to just do a little bit of shading kind of in between the veins and things like that, just so you've not got this huge white expanse with sort of one or two veins in you. You just want everything to be looking a little bit more blended. And honestly, we need to shade this bit really thickly. There's not a huge amount of method to the way I'm doing this. And again, if you find a better method, that's fine. Just adding that extra little bit of detail that makes it seem like a 3D thing, not just Cartoon drawing that somebody's done. Right, I think that's about as good as I'm going to do. Let's add a bit more here. A bit more here. Right, next week we've got a very, very tricky one. We're going to be doing a chrysanthemum. That's how you say it. Um, see how we get on with that. But have a crack. Remember, if you get it wrong, doesn't really matter, it's pencil and paper, you've got a rubber, you can improve it yourself. Hopefully you'll enjoy that. Thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you all next week.